It's a scene you might commonly see in Karachi. In Kansas City, less likely. A brightly colored cargo truck, more than twice as tall as a man, a feat of engineering, a work of art, the end product of what's called the Pakistani Cargo Truck Initiative. For months, artist Ashir Akram and his friends have painstakingly assembled this working version of a truck used every day in Pakistan. Using funds from Kickstarter and other supporters, Ashir bought a 1950s era grain truck, hacked at its frame, rebuilt and repainted the cab and hood, then decked the flatbed with soaring metal decorations, bright paint, fanciful design. We're good there. How are we on that backside? While I was in Pakistan, I came across these trucks in, in such, a, such a bleak and desolate backdrop. These trucks are rolling museums. They are galleries on wheels. It is just... It's kind of uh, a subculture that not a lot of people get to experience because not a lot of people get to travel to places like that. And I, I believe that the, the experience that I had on that trip to both places uh, has really defined the way I would like to continue to create art. Finally hit me and I was like, why don't I just build a truck? Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's, that's where the story started. I began building the truck before we actually um, had acquired any funding whatsoever. I, uh, I found the 1952 Chevy in Salina, Kansas. I paid, I think, eight, eight or nine hundred bucks. It wasn't a lot, but it was a heap. It barely ran. It had a straight six still in it. It had been hand-painted John Deere colors, uh, green and yellow. That's where our journey really began. It was just sitting in a field rusting away. So what we decided to do, we were going to cut the, the, cut the whole uh, 52 cab in half and widen it two feet to make it fit on the newer style chassis. That, that was a big undertaking. That, that was probably um, about 30 to 40% of the time that we've spent on this truck has been on the sheet metal work. Um, cutting a truck in half and remaking um, you know, a fourth of it and making it look like it was made that way is not an easy task. We would get to one point in our journey and it would escalate quickly. We would say, hey, this isn't big enough, or hey, this isn't right. Or somebody would come up with an idea and I would say, hey, that's great, let's roll with it, let's see what it does. So the short of it is $40,000 went in about two months and um, we had a lot more fundraising to do and our <clears throat> deadlines that we initially set kind of went to the wayside because the project gained so much uh, mass momentum. It got so big so quickly. It was really hard to financially keep up with it. You know, it, it's real difficult to try to create, you know, a Shears vision or try to do, you know, try to work with him on what is in his head when we're both trying to, you know, split the responsibility. We feed off of each other with our creativity and he comes up with ideas and I'm like, well, we can do it or we can do it this way or he says, you know, I've got this idea or I've got this idea and, you know, we, we figure it out together and we both, you know, are very good troubleshooters. Kevin has time and time again uh, put a lot of things to the side that, uh, 
that a lot of people wouldn't to make my priorities his priorities. Uh, and this truck being one of them, he has worked alongside me for 18 hour days, time and time and time again. The only thing that's hard is what you haven't done yet. Everything we did yesterday was easy. So it's kind of a daily basis of problem solving. And as long as everybody's creating solutions in the stead of problems, everybody Everybody seems to progress through days easier. The work has been slow and at times difficult. The small downtown Kansas City garage can be stiflingly hot or bitterly cold. The red, it's all going one direction. But still, I think the red got a lot cloudy. Volunteer work is squeezed in between paying jobs in other places. But the team keeps its eyes on the goal, a piece of moving art that can teach others about a foreign way of life. We did come up with a very unique crew of specialized craftsmen and artists, and I'm, I'm blessed to, to have met the people that I've met during my time in Kansas City, a lot of the people that have come to the table have really shown up and they've really done an out outstanding job. They've went above and beyond uh, what I expected them to do and what they were asked to do initially. And what a sheer came to me and wanted me to be part of on his truck was, was the stained glass um, aspect. I think part of the truck is all about color and bling and excitement and lights. And so I'm so proud to be part, part of, of the truck and, and this very part of it, because Ashir has asked me to do the eyebrow of the truck. He had this idea that the eyebrow should be colored glass and he's gonna light this at night. And oh my, it's just, it's just wonderful. <laughs> I know, thank you. Mm. Thank you. When it came to the imagery, Ashir pretty much uh, let me go on that and I think he just kind of trusted me to do something nice um, that would work well with the truck. So thinking about a lot of those animals and how that landscape used to be and kind of the how things have progressed, things that aren't there anymore. And I think that's, I don't know, kind of a way to, to put some of that stuff in there. Just kind of a reminder of what it used to be. So I thought I would make the knobs and I made uh, like uh, water lilies or lotus flowers. So it's, it's a, I think it's an interesting uh, idea because the idea of that Lotus is one petal, one petal, things keep opening like an onion and coming forth and it's about all the people coming together in all the parts. And he sort of gave me creative license with just sort of the understanding that it was Midwest themed. Going back to the Native American traditions and animal symbolism therein, uh, I started kind of thinking about um, portraying this bigger truth with animals, sort of like um, what had been done in places all over the world pre-writing, you know? How do you tell a story or parables with animals as symbols? I was asked to do something for the back of the truck and to sort of feel like hinges that are on a church, but a little more elaborate, a little more organic. Um, and this was what I came up with. The metal heats up either in a gas forge or a coal forge. It um, is brought up to around 2,000 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And at that point, it becomes soft enough to move with, uh, with the strike of a hammer or with a power hammer like I used inside. Um, it moves a little bit more metal 
faster than I could by hand. What I thought would be important for me to do uh, after, of course, building the truck and putting everything together to make it more concise is to kind of weave my work knowing the aesthetic of the Pakistani cargo trucks that actually exist into as much of the vehicle as I possibly could and, and kind of tying everything together um, with the same sort of layering effects that they, they actually employ in Pakistan on the vehicles with geometry. Uh, they normally do it uh, with hand paint and they, they use really simple marks. They use a lot of dots, um, a lot of floral motifs. Ashir says he plans to drive the truck on the Kansas City streets. It will be an actual work vehicle for a time before it winds up as an art exhibit somewhere. Ultimately, the Pakistani cargo truck may be seen as an act of love, a love of art, of country, of culture, an act the team will now share with the world. Initial reason for my curiosity about Pakistan was, of course, because my dad was born and raised in Lahore, and um, my brother and I had always planned on taking a trip, and when my dad passed away of a heart attack, we decided to make that leap, and I wanted to relate it in my art practice uh, from the get-go, and I knew that, so I had applied to the Lighten Grant and Linda and her team at the Artist Coalition um, thought that we could probably work something out. He's really taken his roots up and expanded it in the best way possible. It's really remarkable. So many people these days, they get fixed on the small things in life. And it's not how you should live your life. You know, you should explore and you should test yourself and you should push and you shouldn't always follow the rules. You should make your own rules. So I think, you know, in the end, my, this has really helped me come out of my shell. You know, the way I look at what I do and what I can do with it. Maybe, maybe open somebody else's eyes as well. Another way of bringing different cultures together and explaining them and seeing some positive things, which is what we don't see in the news, about another culture, which is absolutely thrilling. With photographer Rich Sugg, Dave Helling, with the writers, photographers, and editors of the Kansas City Star.